Hello, this is Dr. Sheila Gallagher, one of the two authors of It's Electrifying, a problem-based learning unit about water-based alternative energy. This unit is published by Royal Fireworks Press and is the result of an ongoing collaboration with the Advanced Academics Program in the Fairfax County Schools in Virginia. Dana Plowden, my co-author, was a middle school teacher in Fairfax County and many others in Fairfax had a hand in developing or pilot testing this unit, including Advanced Academics Director Dr. Carol Horn, Project Coordinator Dr. Ann Horak, and Middle School Science Teacher Jesse McKee. In this presentation, we will take a walk through its electrifying so you get a sense of how the unit progresses from start to finish. Along the way, we'll take a look at some of the unit's lesson plans and assessments. I'll also describe different supports that are included in the teacher manual and online so you can be successful teaching It's Electrifying even if you're new to problem-based learning. I suppose I should first address the question, why is the unit focused on water-based alternative energy? Here's the answer. Over 80% of the population of the U.S. lives near an ocean, lake, or river that could be used to generate energy making water one of the more important sources of renewable energy. Even though this unit is located in a specific geographic area, Virginia Beach, and discusses energy generated from the ocean, it could be adapted to different regions and different water sources. We'll get to the storyline of its electrifying in a minute, but first I'd like to talk a little about problem-based learning. Those of you who are familiar with the medical model of PBL know that it transforms the classroom into a content-rich, inquiry-based environment. Three elements work in coordination to make PBL successful. Designing curriculum around an ill-structured problem. Having students, as a group, adopt the perspective of a stakeholder. And changing the teacher role from lecturer to a guide or coach. The ill-structured problem creates the scope and sequence of the unit. Of course, the problem is really designed so that students will encounter content objectives we want them to learn. A problem narrative is included in the teacher manual to give you a sense of how the story progresses. This narrative can serve as a curriculum pathway if you are new to PBL or if you're teaching the unit for the first time. If you're already familiar with the model, use the narrative as a guiding framework. If you're comfortable, you can shape the story according to your students' questions and their learning needs. All you need to do is create a logically consistent beginning, middle, and end. As students explore the problem at the center of the unit, they move through five phases of problem solving. By following this flow of the problem, they are also drawn further into the story and closer to the unit's core content. The five phases include problem engagement, inquiry and investigation, problem definition, problem resolution, and problem debriefing. All stories have a beginning. In a PBL unit, the story begins when the students receive an opening scenario that sets the stage and introduces students to their problem. As you probably suspect by now, the opening scenario is always carefully written to be a catalyst that directs students toward desired content objectives. One of the fun parts of designing PBL scenarios is creating classroom experiences based on real-world situations and this unit is based on an actual initiative in Virginia Beach to reduce their reliance on non-renewable energy. When its electrifying begins, students find they are placed in the role of electrical engineers working for a company that specializes in alternative energy. They receive a memo from the company's CEO indicating that he wants the company to diversify away from solar energy into water-based resources. Students also learn that there is an opportunity for a major project to develop water-based alternative energy in Virginia Beach. 
They are to prepare a proposal for a project based on tidal, wave, or offshore wind energy. After reading the memo, students complete the Learning Issues Board, listing the information they know and questions they need to answer in order to understand the situation better. Students then prioritize their questions, selecting the top four or five they need to answer first, and create a plan of action to find answers for those top priority questions. During inquiry and investigation, students look for the answers to the questions on the Learning Issues Board. Embedded lessons are integrated into the unit based on the questions we know students will have to ask in order to solve the problem. In this case, we have also added a little bit extra, starting with a background on electricity. By the time they reach middle school, many students have some background on how electricity is generated, but that may not be true in all places or for all students. To account for this, we have added a new feature to this PBL unit, an online self-guided tutorial using web-based resources. The Electrical Engineer License Renewal Program is intended to run in parallel with the unit and has a series of activities students can complete at home or during independent work time. If there is time or need, you could even have all students complete the program as an integral part of inquiry and investigation. The Electrical Engineer Renewal Program includes both original activities and online resources so students can move at their own pace and independently. It begins with atomic structure, including atomic elements and Bohr diagrams, and progresses to the production of electricity and the structure of electric generators. The activities are all self-checked. The URL for this program is included with the unit. Regardless of whether or not they are renewing their licenses, these engineers will have to conduct research on tidal, wave, and offshore wind energy. There is a wealth of information online about each of the alternatives students are asked to consider. Too much information, really. For this reason, Dana and I have sorted through dozens of websites and created a list of the sites that have the best information at the appropriate reading levels. These are organized according to topic and are included in the unit and on the accompanying CD. The Common Core State Standards, and other standards as well, encourage careful note-taking and citation in all subject areas. Its electrifying includes a note page that helps students focus on finding information that is relevant to the learning issue they selected, and also prompts them to follow proper MLA citation style. Students will be conducting research into three forms of energy, probably in different groups. In each group, they need to consider the advantage and disadvantage of a kind of alternative energy. They are also encouraged to think about different ways to categorize the advantages and disadvantages. Eventually, students have to compare advantages and disadvantages across the different forms of alternative energy, and a chart is provided to help guide a discussion where students begin to take a look at the big picture. Students are being asked to consider how to generate electricity, and in order to bring this down to a concrete level, they are provided with an opportunity to build their own modest generator with cardboard, wire, and magnets. Complete instructions and pictures are provided to help you prepare and to help your students through the construction process. Having made this contraption several times myself, my biggest piece of advice is to make sure students wrap the wire around the box 300 times and to make sure that the magnets have enough room to move freely, but just enough room. If the magnets are too far away from the wire, the bulb won't light. 
After the students finish the construction of the basic machine, they are encouraged to think about possible variations to see what they could do to change the outcome. They design experiments where they could change the magnets, the wire, the number of turns, the voltage of the bulb, maybe measure amps instead of lighting a light bulb. There are lots of variations on the basic activity for students to explore. An experiment planner is included in the unit so students can create their own experiments. There's a place in the problem log where students can create their own data table, although this could also be done on a computer spreadsheet, and there's a page in the problem log for them to create their lab report. Another frame of reference experts use when solving a problem is conceptual reasoning, seeing abstract or universal relationships at play in the problem. The concept at the core of its electrifying is innovation. Students are first asked to define and describe what innovation means, and they are then introduced to four forms of innovation, basic, sustaining, breakthrough, and disruptive. Throughout the unit, students are asked to consider different dimensions of innovation. Key questions are included in the teacher's manual to help you bring the conversation to a conceptual level. Students are also asked to consider which of several potential barriers might block the way to successful implementation of their innovation. Students are asked to reflect on quotations about innovation across the ages, helping them see that some aspects of change are consistent regardless of the era. An alternative to this particular assignment introduces students to different forms of ethical reasoning and asks students to consider the different ethical appeals that contribute to the conflicts in this problem. And there are conflicts. Just as students are finishing their basic comparison between the different forms of energy, a twist is introduced in the story. Students receive protest letters from three different special interest groups. They learn that there are objections to each form of alternative energy and that they will have to consider the NIMBY element of change regardless of the form of alternative energy they select. They're asked to consider the who, what, and why of the concerns that are raised, and then they rank order those concerns in order of their importance. Eventually, students understand the problem well enough that they are ready to create a specific definition of their problem. Students are encouraged to think of problem definition as a combination of an issue that needs to be corrected or removed and constraints that limit the kinds of solutions they're willing to consider. For instance, students may decide that a successful solution must maintain property value. This would be included as a constraint in the student's problem definition because they have decided that they will not consider solutions that might decrease the value of local homes. Having reached consensus on a clear problem definition, students are ready to come to consensus on a solution. In many curricula, students are allowed to have several different solutions to a problem. While it's good for students to see that many alternative solutions are possible, it's also necessary for them to learn how to select from among those options which is the best option for a particular time and a particular place. Its electrifying includes a process for coming to consensus that helps students, as a class, select which one of the three options they will pursue. What remains is for them to prepare their proposal for the Virginia Beach City Council. The teacher manual contains websites that provide guidelines for building demonstrations and models so that students can create a display to accompany their presentation. 
We even include several pages of tide charts for students to use to create a mariogram if they select tidal power as their energy solution. As they work, students receive notes from the CEO, encouraging them to dig deeper into their content, to find connections, and to make meaningful comparisons of the alternatives. Then they are ready to present to the City Council. The unit includes presentation guidelines for the students to use, and also a set of sample questions for adults who might attend as panel members. Once the students present their solution, the story of its electrifying concludes. But there's still one more stage to PBL, problem debriefing. Research in PBL suggests that this stage helps solidify content knowledge as well as students' awareness of the problem-solving process. The teacher manual includes several ideas for problem debriefing, including inviting a guest speaker in to talk about alternative energy, allowing students time for independent projects on different forms of alternative energy, or even an investigation of where water-based alternative energy is being used today and why one of those places is not the U.S. Problem debriefing also includes an individual final assessment. Up to this point, students have been doing a lot of work in groups. This exercise asks each student to think about the alternative that was selected and presented to the Virginia City Council and to either defend or critique that solution. Throughout the unit, students complete a variety of assessments, most of which are compiled in the student problem log. A set of rubrics is also included for different performance elements in problem-based learning. Special attention was paid to incorporate exercises that were relevant to the problem, yet still met new common core requirements for research, note-taking, and oral presentation, as well as next generation science standards. It's electrifying includes materials that support your journey through the problem too. In addition to the problem narrative, there is an alignment chart that shows where different skills and ideas appear in the unit, sample two and three week schedules, and content background containing the essential information related to the unit. In the back of the manual, you'll find four how-to essays that will help improve your skills as a PBL coach. Finally, there are a number of charts demonstrating the alignment between its electrifying with next generation science standards and with the common and common core standards for science and technical subjects. At this point, I'll add a reminder that there is evidence that problem-based learning can be used to unearth previously unseen academic talent. I hope those who are interested will download the article at the URL listed at the bottom of this slide. If you're interested in teaching It's Electrifying, you should order the teacher manual and the student problem logs. Another helpful book would be Problem-Based Learning in the Classroom, which is a practical guide on how to teach PBL units. If you're interested in widespread use of this or other PBL units in your school or district, hands-on workshops are available through Royal Fireworks Press. To see slideshows describing other PBL units in this series, please visit the Royal Fireworks Press website at www.rfwp.com. Thanks for listening.